2019, June 27. After all the PP mapping and plats from the players to balance the PP system, Peppy decided to remove PP once and for all. He had done that in the past, when he implemented PPv2 in its beta phase, but this time it's permanent. No amount of whining on Reddit will make it come back. On the first day, everyone thinks that the whole ordeal is just a joke. Players banter around in multiplayer how everyone is on the same level. Some players still try farming in hopes that PP will return tomorrow, but their efforts are in vain. Other players who play only for PP announce their quitting until the system is restored. After the first week, the popularity of multiplayer lobbies surge as there is no reason not to play random maps with your friends instead of trying to raise your rank by retrying the same maps over and over again. Some players started to farm maps for top 50 and rank 1 scores, which made obscure maps and difficulties more competitive. Flashlight players wish PP will never return, while PP farmers are still in denial about the situation. Hidden is now as widely used as it was in the first version of PP, since usually 96% is enough with Hidden to beat a 100% score without it. PP mappers are in distress, as nobody plays their maps anymore. Some of them return to their old style of mapping, while others quit completely. While a few of them, especially the most popular ones, are in complete damage control keeping their new style of mapping, so to prove that their vision has nothing to do with PP. This, however, makes them lose motivation, and day after day they either map less or feel that mapping has become a chore. Private servers are flooded with new players, and as a result the servers can't keep up with the influx of demand and completely shut down for a while. A month has passed. Peppy's inbox is full of death threats and suicide notes demanding PP to be re-implemented. But it is no use. The total death count is 7. One of the players used their tablet's court to hang himself, while another performed harakiri with his stylus pen. Mania is almost completely dead now as the only reason for 95% of the players to play was that Osmania had a ranking system. The private servers are up and running again, but interest in them die down, as players either learn to enjoy the game without PP, or switch to Overwatch. On top of that, mentioning these servers are heavily censored in-game, and even outside of it as well. Being caught talking about private servers is punished by at least one month of restriction, while repeat offenders get banned forever. The amount of maps being ranked is reduced by 80% since PP was removed. The player base is steadily dwindling, however, some of the older players who quit came back, as they realized the game has no PP anymore. Most notable of these players is Ruduchi, who came back to enjoy the game once again. Third-party sites try to re-implement PP, however, Peppy wrote an undetectable hack into the algorithm that turns every script that tries to use it into Dragon Human's motivational speech in binary code. Alternative skill measurements, such as O skills and the old OSTP, are thriving until Peppy shuts down their access to the API key they have been using. Tillerino has been banned, and it is the most upvoted thread on Reddit. Some people try to recreate the PP system manually, but it takes some time until they figure it out. Suicide threads completely take over Oskim. Shitposting is rampant, making the mods quit their daytime job to clean the threads Six months have passed. Death count is over a hundred. 
a generation of new players emerge that never experienced the game with PP. They often listen to older players in disbelief how they retry the map over and over again just to choke at the end. Mapping is experiencing a renaissance, freely pushing the boundaries of the system. 2016 to until the PP removal is logged upon as the Dark Ages of Mapping. Drama revolving around mapping is unheard of. Different styles coexist and if players do not like the approach rate on the map, they just simply edit it. While this creates players, those cannot read either above or under the ten. they are usually casual players, those do not participate in tournaments. A full year has passed. PP is an ancient legend at this point. Allsnext is introduced, giving such optimization options that could allow the recreation of PP. The players, however, reject it upon seeing how inconsistent it is with different maps. The creation of teams become available, which kickstarts the game into becoming an eSport. Instead of PP, the players create an ELO system. Multiplayer is now divided into competitive and casual. Competitive multiplayer rooms have different map pools each week that are watered by respected players and mappers. Tournaments now offer small prize pools for players and teams. For the first time since PP was removed, the player base experienced a growth. Three years have passed. Peppy creates a company that rivals Valve and Blizzard. Oz has become one of the biggest esport games in the world, with an active player base of over 30 million people. Cookiezy is now among the top 100 richest people on the planet. The Oz World Cup is the biggest esport event, attracting 100 million people each year. Sufferers of Parkinson's disease are encouraged to play Oz to help them recover. An anime about Oz is announced in Japan, featuring Charlo and Pishifet as voice actors. Porn sites reveal that Pippi Hentai is the most searched term this year. The oldest players now look back at the PP era and think how backwards it was. Berto's channel is the most subscribed channel on YouTube with over a billion subscribers. He features insightful videos that help people around the world understand the meaning of life. As world peace was achieved thanks to us, every country have disbanded their military and instead strive to further mankind in the fields of science, art and entertainment.